Three men were riding in the Colorado Rockies on horseback one starry moonlit night. As they made their way along the base of the mountain, a voice thundered from the sky commanding them to stop and dismount. They immediately followed the instruction. Then the voice continued, Go to the riverbed and pick up some pebbles. Put them into your backpack and do not look at them till morning. Completing their tasks, the men began to mount when they heard the voice again. This will be both the happiest and saddest day of your life. With that final thought, the men went on their way. As the sun began to brighten the eastern sky, the riders reached into their saddlebags. To their amazement, the pebbles had turned to gold. As they celebrated their new wealth, one of the men stopped and exclaimed, Wait, now I know what the voice meant when he said this would be both the happiest and saddest days of our lives. Yes, we have gold, but think how rich we would be had we picked up more pebbles. In today's gospel, in the parable of the hidden treasure, the man finds the hidden treasure by accident. He was not really looking for it. And when he found it, out of joy, goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Somebody or someone introduces us to Jesus and our life changes for the better. Or we stumble upon it while watching TV or hearing of a Christian life program being announced in church. And then we are smitten. On the other hand, in the parable of the pearl, the man is a merchant whose job is to look for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. We are in constant search for life's meaning, for peace, for joy. We go searching for it in the pleasure-filled spaces of this world, but the happiness we enjoy remains temporary. And then our search ends when we finally meet Jesus in a Christian life program or a retreat or in some form. The Blind Side is the underdog hit of the film world this season. In a rare turnaround, The Blind Side hit number two at the box office, uh, number one, I should say. Last weekend, they were number one. Three weeks after it opened, even surpassed Twilight in ticket sales. This morning, we're going to meet the real-life family, inspiring millions of moviegoers. There they are there, the Tui family in their home in Memphis. We're going to talk to them in a moment, but first, a look at their heartwarming story. The Baltimore Ravens select Michael Orr, offensive tackle, Mississippi. It is the true story of the larger-than-life left tackle for the Baltimore Ravens, Michael Orr, a first-round NFL draft pick who defied great odds and is now living his dream. I'm just happy to be a part of the NFL. Well, he was hit when he threw it, and Michael Orr, the rookie right tackle, caught it. But in many ways, for Orr, the real dream began years before he entered the NFL. One of 13 children, he grew up in northern Memphis, abandoned by a single mom. It was hard for me, you know, because I was on my own and nobody at home. Until one cold night when his life collided past with a tough-as-nails southern mother, Leanne Tui, played by Sandra Bullock in The Blind Side. What is he wearing? It's below freezing. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Don't you dare lie to me. Orr was eventually adopted by the family, and with Leanne relentlessly by his side, he began to turn his life around, both in the classroom and on the football field. The first tutor got here at 7, and we had a tutor at 7, 8, and 9. I was, uh, I was unstoppable and felt like no matter what, you know, I was going to win the battle. Together as a family, there they were when Orr graduated from high school, played four years at Ole Miss, and was drafted by the Ravens. And in this true story, everyone's a winner. Anything is possible. My background is, you know, a bad background. And, you know, people said, a lot of people said I couldn't do it. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. Yes, you can. And we're joined now by the Tui family, live from their home in Memphis, Tennessee. That's Leanne, Sean, who's a dead ringer for Tim McGraw. Uh, Sean Jr., they call him <laughs> SJ, and their beautiful daughter, Collins. Is, is the is the concept of the story accurate and it's extremely accurate it's about a, a person with an immense amount of intellect and immense amount of talent and a whole lot to give to society that basically had just deemed him worthless and i think the movie really did a nice job of showing you know how many michael ors out there are getting passed by or how many are slipping through the cracks what was it about michael though leanne that made you want to have sean stop the car and, and, and go and get him I, you know, if I knew the answer to that, that'd be worth a million dollars. Michael was there. He had a need. We were had the ability to fill it. 
Um, we all fell madly in love with him within probably 48 hours, and um, he was just an instant part of this family. And you know, Sean Jr. doesn't even really know life without Michael. You know, SJ was probably seven when Michael came, and he um, he doesn't know life without Michael. Really, none of us do anymore. We forget what it was like before Michael was here. So Michael uh, wanted to receive help, mm -hmm. and um, and and he wanted to, uh, to change his life and better himself. And um, and we were just here, and and it was just uh, the we were just lucky. We just got a, a great kid, uh, a wonderful addition to our family. We absolutely know that the good Lord put Michael in our life for a reason, and we know that this story happened for a reason. So it doesn't surprise us that positive things are coming out of the movie and the book and the whole story. Leon Tui, who discovers Michael Orr walking on the street bereft of warm clothing on a freezing night, decides to adopt him. Michael also discovers the potential he never knew he had. There was no turning back from then on. Life changes dramatically for the better for both the Tui family and for Michael. Our goal is to keep Jesus constant in our lives because we know that He is the source of bountiful joy. No matter what happens to us, we know He has our backs covered. We have found the true treasure and we must sustain it. It is grace from the Holy Spirit that will allow us to keep it in our hearts. We are grateful. Oftentimes, our search for meaning in life comes when we are down on bended knees, when we are knee-deep in our difficulties. And as we wade through the flooded streets of life, we discover our lifesaver in Jesus Christ. We must seize the opportunity, abandon completely the crooked path we took, and choose the path that will lead us to our eternal salvation. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, now that I've found your treasure, let me not be separated from you. Let me desire you completely and constantly, so that peace and joy may remain in me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.